The last demo for today is the padding oracle attack, which we talked about last time, but I did not do it. So let me go here, and I think all I need is interactive Python 3. So it doesn't matter what directory I'm in or anything. Using Python 3 in immediate mode is enough for most of what we're doing here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to encrypt three blocks of data. So we got three 16-character blocks of plain text. Then we have an initialization vector, which is, um, this is AES CBC, so this is 128 bits, which is 16 bytes. And then you have a 16-byte key. And then you encrypt it and get ciphertext. Then you take the output of this and use that as the nonce for the next block, and the output of this and use that as the nonce for the next block. So you get 48 bytes of ciphertext from 48 bytes of plain text. All right. So if you were to encrypt a shorter message that's only 47 bytes long, then this block would not be complete. So you'd have to add padding, which is this purple, in order to fill the block, because you cannot encrypt anything that doesn't fill the block. So now you encrypt that, which is fine. And the encryption scheme looks good. The problem is the decryption scheme. This XOR right here is right next to the plain text. So when you run this backwards to decrypt, the XOR goes down here. You have ciphertext coming in, and the XOR is right there. And here's the padding. So the problem is the padding is easily predictable. The padding is like this, 010203. So if you modify this byte, then you change these 16 bytes and that one byte. And so there is a value of this byte that will cause that byte to have correct padding when it is a 0, 1. And the only other byte here that will have correct padding is the original unaltered value that will have. So you can change this byte until you know that that byte is a 1 if you have a padding error message. So you know when the padding is wrong. And therefore, you can deduce an intermediate value here, and which we're going to use. So let me just try doing some of this. Let's see if I can run this Python. Good, it's going to work on my Mac here. This older crypto system is working. All right, so make that big. I'm going to shove. Yes. Exactly right, a Koran. The only reason it works is because they give you an error message that tells you whether the padding had an error. If they would not give you that informative error message, you wouldn't be able to do this. That's why you know you could maybe argue that AES CBC is not that bad. It's just a bad implementation. But in practice, a lot of people made this mess, made this error. It's a fairly common mistake in computers of all kinds that they give you an error message that tells you too much. Like you log in and it tells you, oh, incorrect username or incorrect password, instead of just saying try again. All these things make it easier for the attacker. So here, I import the crypto cipher. I give it a key and an IV. And then I create a new AES object. Um, in fact, I think I'll make it even bigger. I can see there. Yep. All right. All right. And so now um, I define A to be a 16-byte message. And now I can encrypt it and print it. So that will encrypt it, making ciphertext. And so there is the hexadecimal binary encrypted version of hello from AES. Turns into that garbage. Now to decrypt it, looks like this here. All right. So I make a new key. The AS mode is CBC, cipher block chaining, and I feed in the IV, which we defined up here, and I feed in the key, which we defined up here. And now I'm going to use the ciphertext, and D is here, cipher decrypt, so there it is. That's how it looks in ASCII, and that's how it looks in hex. So you can encrypt and decrypt as long as you have the key and the IV, which is, of course, the intended use case. So now we're going to do some padding. So let's take a look at this one. All right. So now I have a key and an IV. Now I create a new AES object with the key and the IV and the same mode, CBC. So here is a sentence that's 47 bytes long. 
Okay. Uh, now, I have to pad the sentence and encrypt it. I won't be able to encrypt 47 bytes. In fact, let me try that. To encrypt it up here, we did this. Cybertext is cipher encrypt A. Let's just try that. It should fail. And it does fail. Data must be padded to percent D byte boundary. And then it, there, 16 byte boundary. There you are. So you can't encrypt you can't encrypt a 47 letter message. You can only encrypt a 48 letter message. So to pad it, doing PKCS number seven padding. The way you do it, since I only need one byte of padding, I put a one at the end. That's how it works. That makes it 48 bytes long. Now, um, all right, I'm going to take, um, this is the original perfect ciphertext. Now I'm going to take and make something called mod, which is going to have the first 31 bytes correct, and then put in a 255, and then have the rest. And what that is doing is this picture here. I'm doing this right here. See, I'm taking the first 31 bytes correct. I'm changing this one to 255, and then leaving all the rest alone. So that variable mod is this modified ciphertext with one byte changed. And now, we can try encrypting those two things, or decrypting those two things, pardon me. All right, so here we go. So notice this is the original ciphertext, and this is the modified ciphertext. They are exactly the same, 8046, 8046, and so on. Someplace in here there is one byte different, about two-thirds of the way down. This one here is FF, and this one is 24. All the rest of it is exactly the same. That's what we got here. So now when we decrypt them, we define um, a new AES object with the key and the IV, and we decrypt the ciphertext, and we decrypt the mod. So we're making C and C mod. And now here's C in hex, and here's C mod in hex. The first block is the same for both of them, so the first block is fine, but the second block will be completely destroyed. So it should be 56, E6, 36, and it's all garbage. But the third block is OK, except for the last one byte, which changed. That is the pattern. And remember, we talked about this. If there's anything in the encrypted stuff that has a pattern, that's bad. You can exploit that pattern to learn information about the key, and that's what's going to happen here. So what you're seeing there is the specific numbers showing this situation. You've got, uh, you modified the ciphertext, but this block is fine, and most of that block is fine. This whole block is scrambled, and the last one byte here is scrambled. So that's the fundamental weakness. Changing one block of ciphertext does not scramble the whole thing, which is the ideal. It really should just ruin the whole thing. That would be a lot safer. But instead, it has a strange, non-random pattern of consequences. And we can exploit that to break the cryptography. So now we're going to make a vulnerable system. And so I need to make a file. Uh, so I'll get out of here. And uh, maybe I'll go into a directory 141. OK, make a directory uh, called um, CBC. Go into CBC. All right, just kind of nice to be in a controlled environment. So now I'll make a, uh, you can define your own functions in Python. We're going to make a vulnerable system, pad or dot pi for padding Oracle. And that is just going to do what we just did, but it's going to have an overly informative error message. So. This is the code. All right. So what it does, it always uses a certain key in IV because I don't really care. That's all right. And so you're going to have a decrypt routine. And this is the thing that checks to see if the padding is correct. And it tells you either padding error, if there's anything wrong with the padding. And then you have an encrypt. And here's the thing that does the padding. So it defines these functions that we can use. The PKCS padding, 
encrypt, decrypt, and a test to see if it is PKS7. That's what these things define. They define some functions that we can import and use. So, we'll run Python 3 again. And we can import the encrypt and decrypt routine. Okay, we import encrypt and decrypt. Then we have the 47 byte sentence. And we do C equals encrypt of A. Remember, we can encrypt 47 now because it will pad it and encrypt it for us. So there we are. You get this encrypted stuff. It doesn't just complain the way raw AES did. Our routine will automatically pad when you encrypt. So we can decrypt it. The encrypted stuff is in C. This will decrypt the C and put it in D. And see, here we are. This is the decrypted stuff. And notice it has the padding byte at the end. It didn't remove the padding byte, which normally you would. I left it in there just so we can see it. So it automatically added this 0, 01 to the end of the 47 character sentence and uh, encrypted it. And then when it decrypted it, that byte was still there. So now we can see the um, vulnerability. So, if we take this, we take the ciphertext and we change the last byte. So we take only the first 47 bytes and change the last byte that should have been 0, 01, or should have been 0, A rather, and change it to 65. Then when we decrypt it, it will say padding error. It decrypted it, changing this byte, changed that whole block. The last byte was now random, and so you had a padding error. All right, so um, let me go back to my diagram here. So now we're going to define the goal. The goal here is to create a valid encrypted message that will include win. I'm just going to try to get three letters of plain text, of chosen plain text, without knowing the key or the IV for that matter. And so the way you do it is you consider this intermediate state right here. You have ciphertext that's decrypted with the key with without an IV and that creates something here and I cannot predict what that is because I don't know the key but I can deduce what it is by doing this I change this value until I stop getting the padding error so I can reach a point where I know that this is a zero one and I know what number I put here and all I have to do is XOR those two together, and I can deduce this value here. So even though I don't know the key, I can deduce these bytes here. And then I can feed in whatever bytes I need to here to create whatever bytes I want in that block. So I can forge a message, any message I want, without knowing the key. That's what we're going to do. So, all right. So we'll start here. We need to have a valid ciphertext to start with. So this sentence clearly says I'm a loser, but clearly spelled wrong to make it the right length. OK, so this is my original ciphertext that I know is valid and correctly padded because I encrypted it with that routine. Now I'm going to find the intermediate value of 47. So here's a loop. This is going to try five values. It's going to do the same thing. Take the original 31 bytes and then put in a range from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 here, and then back to the original stuff, and then decrypt it. So I'm going to get they all have padding error. So all these are invalid. All right, so that's fine. Now if I want to find a valid value, I'll just try all 256 values. And instead of having to look through a list of 256, I'm going to do mod, modify it by putting in that byte. And if it's not equal to padding error, then print that it's correctly padded. If it does have padding error, then don't bother printing that out. So now there are two values that are correct, the result in correct padding, 147 and 154. One of them is the original unaltered value, and the other must be the one that creates a byte of zero, 01 there. So 
to see the original value of the ciphertext. I can print original of 31, and that's 154. So it's 147. 147 in the 32nd, uh, 31st byte creates a 01 at the end. So <coughs> all right. So here's another way to do it more efficiently. All right, if I make the original 16 and I fill this with all A's, see what I did, I used, here I used valid ciphertext, so there were two values that gave me correct padding, and I had to figure out which one was not the original. So what I'm going to do is use broken ciphertext, which will create garbage. And even with broken ciphertext, there will be one that gives me correct padding, and now I know it's 0, 1. So that's why I take the original, and I just fill this with all capital A's. And then I add one more byte, which I wander through. Only one of these is going to be right. The others are all going to be garbage. So now I don't have to bother figuring out that 154 is the original value, and 147 is the one that works. Now I directly get the 147. So a value of 147 in byte 31 leads to a value of 0, 1 in the decrypt at the end. So, I have now learned um, All right. Now, fill those with B. Why do I fill 15 from 16 to 31 B and then test? Oh, this just shows that again it's 147. That's obvious. All right. So now, I've now learned something. When ciphertext 31 is um, that value, 147, this is 0, 1, so that intermediate value is the XOR of 147 and 0, 1. And that's here. That's 147, 0, 1, 146. So now I know intermediate 47 is 146. I've learned enough to forge one byte. So now I just have to do it again for intermediate 46, and I think I won't keep doing it live. I'll just talk about it. So now you, now you know this one. So you can put a value here that will create a 0, 2, and you can vary this one until the padding is correct, and now you know that this one is 0, 2. So you can, this one is 0, 2, so you can deduce that. So you can pick off as you want. So you keep going until you have, I think, four of them. Yep, find four bytes. And then um, you'll be able to get your name on the winner's page if you keep going. But anyway, that's, that's the game here. So you can, you can now forge W-I-N and then a null. So you can make a message that ends with win. And so there's a key you get here just by doing all the steps up here. And there's another key, which typically only a few students ever do, where you actually put your name on a live server of mine. So uh, there should be a winner's page. Ah, I'll have to fix that. Okay, I'll find out what's going on with that and fix it. Uh, I think people keep nuking it on my server. Oh, it was in the temp. That's why. Nobody's got it right. I'll have to get it right to get one up there. Anyway, you'll have to find a ciphertext which will decrypt to something readable with your name in it, and then it'll put your name on the board. Although I would just go for three letters of your initials, because as you can see, it's a lot of work for every letter. Anyway, that's good, clean fun. I think as soon as somebody gets it right, it'll be there. Because I restarted the server, the temp pages are gone is all. Anyway, so that's the joy of the padding oracle attack. Yes, and I'm going to stop now.